Okay, so this is our second video for the Cartoon Jumble. We have all our references here. They're all large enough. And we left off by creating a new file in Photoshop that was eight inches tall, 10 inches, or 10 inches tall, eight inches wide at 350 pixels per inch. If we ever wanna check that, we can always, within Photoshop, go to image, image size, and we'll see those specifications, right? Now, we are going to take these images from the desktop, drag and drop them into Photoshop. This is the, the, the most intuitive way to do it on a Mac. There are lots of different ways you can do it. But instead of opening them up individually in Photoshop and copying them over, we just take them from the desktop, drag and drop them on. And then you'll see an X through them, right? That X through them means that they need to be placed. So you hit return to place them. It doesn't mean you can't change them just means you have to place them. Now here's the problem. I want to erase it now. Let's say I want to take my lasso and take out a big chunk of it and hit delete. It won't let me. Because when you take something directly from the desktop, this is a good thing, so let me explain it. And you move it into Photoshop, it comes in as what is called a smart layer. And you'll see that under your layer window, just like we saw in Pixlr, you'll have a layer window. There's a little icon in the corner of the picture in the layer window. That little icon means it's a smart object. A smart object will not save it in its memory in Photoshop alone. It will always refer to an external file and then just show it to you in Photoshop. So if that sounds confusing, it's because it is confusing. But it has major advantages later when we do vectors and want to bring them into Photoshop and not have them distort. So for now, what we need to do is actually right click on the layer itself. So this is really getting you focused on the layer window. Not right click on the image in the layer, but on the gray part of the layer. <laughs> and you'll get the option to rasterize. Rasterize means to make pixels out of. That's why it's a raster format. So we wanna make pixels out of this layer and that will just turn it into a normal Photoshop layer, which allows us then to delete things. Like for instance, this oval that contains him. So the way I'd want you to delete, just to practice simple deleting, is to use the lasso tool. The tools in Photoshop are from the least complex to the most complex. So we wanna stick with some pretty basic selection tools first. Just uh, click and drag around your selection, then just hit delete. If you want to make it perfectly clean, you can practice your shortcut for zooming, which is command plus and command minus zooms out. And then when you're zoomed in and you want to move around, you can just hold down the space bar. This is a new shortcut. And it will turn your tool into the hand tool, no matter what tool you're using in Photoshop. And then you can drag and click and drag and that will move you around your zoomed in, zoomed in image so that you can make more informed selections to delete. Right. But before I go too much into editing this one image, I wanna bring in another image. Now notice already, we've just brought in one image, but I have, um, two layers. And that's because Photoshop will always have a background layer until you tell it not to. For this instance, we want to keep that background and it's just blank white. Without it, we have empty space. This is how Photoshop shows empty space with this pale gray grid. So we want the white background and then we just want our, our references on top of it. Now let's bring in the next image. Just drag and drop, it will go on top of the layer that was last selected. We hit return to place it. We right click on the gray of that layer to rasterize it. That allows us to edit it and delete it, delete from it. I'm gonna get rid of the labeling here. It won't help my copyright case if every character has a label on it. And you can see as I delete, 
the layer underneath is starting to peek through a little bit. But this is the next part of the setup. We want to make it so that we only see the black lines. We don't want to see the white anymore. So on each layer, we are going to turn it from a normal layer style to what's called a multiply layer style. So we go from normal, scroll down to where it says multiply. And that is like having it on a projector where the, it's transparent except for the black lines. Multiply lets anything come through that's dark. I'm also gonna do that to my first layer, even though it's not gonna make a difference because it's already on a white background, right? But that way I have them both stacked on top of each other. Now I select my top layer, I bring in my third. Hit return, rasterize. And continue on. The only time you don't want to rasterize it is if you have to resize your image and make it bigger before you hit return. So let me show you what I mean with this next one. So I'm just selecting some stuff to delete just to show you it's editable. And then I'm going to change it to multiply mode. Right? So they're all stacked on top of each other. Okay, the next one. Drag and drop it in. So now, what if I don't hit return? What if I want to change it before I place it? Well, it's still a smart object. Not only do I have the X through it, I also have these anchor points. These allow me to distort it. They allow me to flip it on its axis and move it around if I click in the middle. They allow me to rotate it. These are called transforming tools. And I can do that before I place. So if I want this one to be a little bit more circular, I can do it. And if I want to lock its proportions so it doesn't distort on me but just gets smaller or bigger, I hold down shift while I transform it. And if I want it to shrink, lock its proportion, but shrink or enlarge not from one corner, but from the center, I hold down shift and option. So go ahead and try that with one. And then hit return. You'll notice it's still a smart layer and I won't be allowed to subtract from it until I rasterize it. But it's just to remind you that you should size and place your object before you rasterize it. You rasterize by clicking on the layer right click on the gray of the layer, hit rasterize layer, and then you can delete stuff. Now I'm gonna end up deleting a lot more than just these borders, but I know that these borders and these name, name plate la uh, labels have to go. So when it, the only way I've showed you so far is when you bring a new file in before you hit return to place it, you see that X through it and you see these corners, that allows you before you hit return to manipulate it. After you've rasterized it, you also are able to change its size and that's called transforming. And so let me show you that with this one. So I'm gonna place this one, then I'm going to rasterize it and that gets rid of the little icon in the corner. So now it's editable. But now let's say I wanted to change its size. I have to hit Command T. And that's a shortcut for free transform. You can find it the long way under Edit and Free Transform. And it will teach you the shortcut right there. So make sure you're on the layer and then hit Command T. And it will make a box around it. And then you can rotate and you can scale. Okay. So I will come and check that out. Now the problem with transforming like this after you've rasterized it is then the computer has to make up new pixels. Which isn't always a problem, but if you're making something larger, it can be a problem. It will soften your image, right? 
let me pause. Okay, so now I have rasterized, and this is the goal for your assignment. I have five or more than five layers that are rasterized and stacked, and I've turned them all to multiply mode. And so it looks really messy, right? Now, I'm going to turn all of them off, except for my first layer. And how do I turn layers off? I just click on the eyeball. And I'm going to start playing with modifying the layer. So how do we modify, modify pixels? The easiest way that we're going to learn with this exercise is by transforming them. Hitting Command-T, as long as they're rasterized, puts a box around them that then we can stretch and rotate. But if we right click within the box, it will give us more options still. One of my favorites is warp. Right? I talked a little bit about this in our first class. So by warping, I can stretch it not just wide or tall, I can stretch it in each of these little quadrants. Right? So I can make that side of him bulge. I, make, I can make his gun less impressive. <laughs> I can make him squat, right? And then when you hit return with transform tools, just like with placing, you have to hit return after before you can do something else. If I just toggle command Z, it will show me what that difference did. And then I play some music and make a GIF animation. Whatever it is, right? I always recommend you do that. You toggle Command Z after you transform to make sure you like what the transformation did, right? Now, the other way you can edit, and I, I encourage you to be pretty brazen with this. These are not precious pixels. These are just things to play with, just collage material, is I want you to just cut things out. So I'm going to first cut out the eyes, uh, maybe cut out like a leg here or there, <laughs> just by lassoing around and deleting. And I don't need to worry about it because if I ever want to get it back, I have my resources here, right? And then also I can feel free to rotate it as long as I don't move it off of the screen, off of the page, because I don't want it cropped. And here in Photoshop, unlike Illustrator, the format of the canvas does matter. So I'm going to build it layer by layer that way. Now I'm going to take He-Man here. I'm going to play with him. I might warp him a little, have some fun. Maybe make him all torso with tiny little legs. You'll notice that the line quality is still there, but there's a different, you know, it doesn't look as recognizable anymore. And then I can just delete the things that I think are really silly. I love the brushwork of the kneecaps, so I can keep that, but delete that foot. I'm going to get rid of the whole head, I think, this time. Get rid of the axe. Maybe just keep the hand. So again, be really, really willing to delete stuff. And we'll keep going. And then, of course, I can rotate him, or I can right-click inside the transform box and flip him horizontally, right? And I can play with the sizing. As long as I'm making him smaller, not bigger, I won't lose pixel quality. But when you force pixels to grow bigger, they will get softer. You guys with me? Now notice that layer also had a little bit of, this is, comes from the scanning of the coloring book. It's got a little debris over here. I want to make sure that gets deleted as well. Anything that's darker than white is going to show up in a multiply mode. Next layer. I can transform, I can rotate, I can warp, I can distort. I think, okay, what do I want from this guy? I like the little rocks. I like the big foot. 
I like all the hands, but I don't know 